Hello, hello, my panda pals, and welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna be covering what happened on season five, episode five of Seeking Sister Wife. So if that sounds good to you and you're ready to go, sit down, buckle up, and let's go for a ride. Now, I know I tend to focus a lot on the Mary Fields in my recaps, but that is because A, they are insane, and B, not a lot tends to happen with the other couples. That is gonna be the case for today's recap as well. So for the Salahuddins, the only thing that happened is the couple agreed that there is to be no sexual intimacy before marriage because Nyla is a very jealous person. So I had a kiss before with a potential sister wife. It is always in the back of my mind. It is something that I have some anxiety around. Which makes you wonder why Nyla is pushing for this lifestyle so hard, but that is a conversation for a different day. The pair go off to meet Keisha, who ends up getting cold feet at the very last minute, tells them she has a lot of loose ends to tie up so she cannot make the trip. Nyla and Naeem are obviously disappointed and they go out to dinner alone. And Naeem tells Nyla he wants to start dating people in person. And Nyla tells him this terrifies her. So she still wants to start things out online. Now, the only thing that happens with the Ryans is that Stephanie comes out of the woodwork to say, I'm sorry, I want to see you again. So the Ryans plan a trip up to Colorado, but in the last minute, Stephanie backs out again and says, never mind, I'm super busy, please don't come. The Ryans are getting fed up with her hot and cold attitude, so despite Stephanie's wishes, they head on up anyway. They've been trying to call Stephanie to let her know this, but Stephanie refuses to answer her phone, so she has no idea that they are on their way. Before they get to her house, they stop by her gym to renew her membership for her. And if this gym is the gym that I think it is, that membership is $80 a month at the lowest cost. They do this because they wanna show Stephanie that they care about her and no one else in the world is gonna care for her the way that they do. We, we try to be generous with her and we're always buying her stuff. Hopefully this helps get rid of this round of doubt. They end up going to her house and Justin stays in the car because he doesn't want to make Stephanie angry and Becky and her big balls goes outside and rings the doorbell to see if Stephanie's home. And the only thing that happens with the Davis family is April and Danielle sit down to have a little one-to-one -one chat. Danielle tells April she feels super guilty and is having a difficult time forgiving herself for leaving the family. And April tells her that she better forgive herself because the entire family forgives her. April also tells Danielle that she understands that things have been difficult and this has been a huge adjustment for Danielle. And her love for Danielle supersedes her desire to add another woman into the family. So she's okay with taking things slow and allowing Danielle not to date for the time being, which Danielle is super grateful and very relieved to hear. And finally, moving on to the Merrifields. Now a lot happens with them, so just in case you forgot, last episode, Garrick tried to play dumb, lie, and gaslight his way out of trouble when Danielle finally called him on his bullshit after Natalia found dating apps that he told her he would delete still installed onto his phone. Garrick continues to plead ignorance and innocence, and it is astounding how bad at this he is. You've shown me new people, Garrick. No, you can't see lines. them unless you pay. Wow, this is his defense. I didn't show you new people because I can't see new people unless I'm paying for the app. Well, Garrick, that must mean that you're paying for the app. I only responded to the old people like I told both of you, I would. You can still chat with them. No, you can't. Mm-hmm, yeah. I think it is hilarious that him trying to guilt these two girls for accusing him of deceit is actively conflicting with him trying to gaslight them. It's like two negatives canceling each other out. He's trying to show that he is an upstanding guy because he's only talking to people he's made contact with in the past. And he tries to show them that he's a good guy because he made them aware of this. Like, oh, I'm Garrick, I'm so honest and transparent. But then in his attempt to gaslight them, he says that he cannot be chatting with new people because he doesn't pay for the app and therefore he does not have access to chat with people. Then how are you talking to the old people, Garrick? How you doing that? Telepathy? Garrick is like a possum. He's in the presence of danger and he just goes absolutely catatonic. Natalia explains that having dating apps is fine, but she's not okay with him telling her he would delete them and then not following through. They were changing all? Yeah. I understand what you're talking about now. I kept 
The now, apps open. Now you understand. No way. Garrett goes on to say that he did stop talking to new people, but that he kept the apps so that he could continue talking to the old people because he felt that it was a rude thing to do to stop correspondence with them so suddenly. I did what I said. I'm going to quit talking to people. I mean, I guess I didn't take the next step thinking it through. I guess that's where you learn what women think. Ex f***ing squeeze me? First of all, it's not, oh, I didn't take the next step. You didn't take the f***ing step. So no, it's not how women think. It's literally how anyone with a functioning brain and the basics of cognitive ability thinks. It doesn't take a Mensa scholar to know that when you choose not to do the thing that you promised someone you would do, and then you actively hide the fact that you did not do it, you are lying. Natalia is angry and aggravated and she heads out of the room. Garrick is upset because he was planning on proposing to Natalia tonight, but clearly that is no longer a thing that's going to happen. It is a new day and Garrick sits down with Danielle to talk to her about what happened the night before. He tells her he feels bad and should have just listened to her because now Natalia is definitely questioning his intention. Natalia is definitely questioning my intentions, wondering, am I a good guy? No. Did I deceive her? Uh, yeah. Am I a man of my word? No, absolutely not. Garrett goes on to say that he needs to prioritize these two ladies because he does not want to displease God or them. I mean, might I suggest not lying? Not being a misogynistic piece of crap? Like, if God is real, he definitely does not like you. Bro is in the clouds looking down at you going, he is a mess. Still think I should propose to him to show her that I'm sincere, like I'm not playing games with her. A proposal is going to mean nothing if you cannot even follow through on something as small as, I'll delete this dating app. God leads us and we'll act together. <sighs> Y'all are just making a straight up mockery out of Christianity. Like I am not religious, but I am angry at you for them. You know how a lot of religious people say that God does not give you burdens that are too heavy for you to carry? Like these two goobers really think that this is the trials and tribulation that God is giving them to test their faith and obedience in him. That this hot ass Brazilian chick might not want to marry Garrick because he is a lying, narcissistic, misogynistic asshole. Garrick is really over here thinking, oh, this is my cross to bear, but we'll get through this because we believe in God. Like, dude, God asked Abraham to murder his own son to test his faith in him. Like, you not being able to bang Natalia tonight is not a cross that he's asking you to bear. Natalia comes down and Garrick apologizes to her. I wanted to let you know that I should have listened to sister. You and sister are more important than anybody else. He keeps referring to her as sister, and I don't know if he's doing this because it's better for translation purposes, but if it's not for that reason, then it feels really culty and really gross. Natalia tells him that she's happy he recognizes his mistakes and that she hopes that he has changed and that this will never happen again. Danielle tells her Garrick would never intentionally hurt them, nor would he ever put anything before them. Garrick asks them to help him delete the dating apps on his phone, because I guess he does not know how to long press on an app until it wiggles and then push that little X button. And when he makes a request to have their help in deleting the apps, Natalia's like, oh, whoa, 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 you have multiple dating apps. How many dating apps do you have? And yeah, Natalia thought that he only had a single dating app, but this little had had 10. He goes on to justify that he had 10 dating apps because it's difficult to find people who are open to polygamous relationships. So he wanted to be able to cast his net wide. It is fine to cast a wide net into the dating pool, but why are you still hanging on to a net that you have no intention of using and have told them that you would get rid of? Natalia tries to get Garrick to practice some empathy, which for a narcissist of Garrick's caliber is nigh impossible, but A plus for trying. How would you feel if I told you I deleted all dating apps and didn't delete to answer people and comment? Garrick says, yeah, he would feel bad and he's definitely ashamed of himself because... I feel very disappointed in myself because I absolutely hate lying and I am very ashamed. Then you must be swimming in a constant sea of self-loathing because all you do is lie. 
Garrick tells us that he's willing to do anything to show Natalia that he loves her and is sincere, which basically means that he's willing to tell her any lie he has to in order to get her to say yes to him so that he can bang her. When she's had a little time of adjustment, you know, we're gonna have five wives. We're gonna have the 10 dating apps back. She's gonna have to work through that also. She is not mad at the dating sites, bro. She's mad because you lied, you got caught, and then instead of owning up to your mistake and apologizing, you lied even harder and tried to gaslight these two women to cover it up. Natalia tells him that he better promise to stop lying and Garrett cries his little alligator tears and Danielle goes on to console the little baby cause he's having a difficult time dealing with the consequences of his actions. Yes, he is. Garrett did not want to hurt you. You always worry about defending. He has to know how to bear the consequences of his mistakes. Oh my God, can I marry Natalia? Garrett goes on to give the most heartfelt apology that he can humanly muster. I'm sorry. I won't do this again. Please forgive me. Natalia accepts his apology and they all make up. Natalia tells us that she really likes Garrick, so she's willing to give him a second chance. And I mean, I would not have made that choice. <laughs> if someone I liked showed me that they had a seemingly limitless capacity to lie, manipulate, and gaslight, then, you know, it's a no for me, dog. What did King David say? Please, Lord, cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. So I guess God had to fester something out of me that needed changed. Oh my God, dude, this is so annoying. Quick Bible story time. King David of slaying the Goliath with his stone and slingshot fame. He is king of Israel. He is hanging out in Jerusalem while his army is out fighting the Ammonites. One day he's looking out his window. He sees this military man, Uriah's wife. She is hot, she's fine. She's bathing on her rooftop. And he is like, damn, I wanna tap me that ass. So he does. He ends up getting her pregnant. And in order to save face, he tries to get Uriah to come back from fighting because he thinks he's gonna be hella horny, he's gonna bang his wife, and then he's gonna think that the baby is his. But Uriah is a real bros bro, and he's like, nah, dude, I'm not gonna leave my friends to fight the good fight without me. So now David is like, well, well damn, I guess I gotta kill you then. So he tries to get Uriah put on the front line so that he will be immediately killed. And then God looks down, he's like, yo, that's getting messed up. So he calls on his prophet Nathan, and he's like, Nathan, my dude, my guy, will you go set this dude Straight? And Nathan goes over there and he's like, yo, David, like, let me tell you this story about this absolute douchebag. Like, does he kind of remind you of anyone? And David is like, yo, it's me. I'm the douchebag. And then he goes to God and he's like, I'm super sorry. He asks for his forgiveness and God gives it to him. Story time over. Now this annoys the crap out of me because Garrick knows this story so well that he's able to pull a verse out of his ass and it is very relevant to what is going on right now. So this means that he is incredibly aware that what he did was wrong. He's known this whole time. Like at least David was a good guy who did a bad thing and he did not realize he was doing a bad thing until someone set him straight. Garrick is over here trying to say he learned his lesson, but he already knew the lesson. He's known this entire time. He's known it really well and he did it anyway. So I really need Garrick to stop using the Bible to justify being a shitty person and as a way to utilize it to manipulate people into believing that he is a good person. And that, my Panafals, is all for today. If you liked today's video and you want to support my channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button, give this video a big fat thumbs up, and let me know in the comments what you thought about this episode. I hope you guys had a great time. Stay tuned for the next one. And as always... Thanks for not letting me ride this train wreck alone. Bye.